Today we're at All Croft Lakes, which is where I've been doing most of my winter fishing. Um, been fishing some silverfish matches here, which has been really good fishing. Got catching between 15 and 30 pound, mainly skimmer fishing. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a beautiful day at the moment, but earlier on this morning, it was minus two as we were driving here. So there was quite an heavy frost, which might have a bit of an impact on it today. But I think we're confident we should catch some fish because the sun's out and the water should warm up pretty quickly. Mainly fishing for skimmers on a long pole, short pole. So yeah, um, concentrate today on pellets, some dead maggots, bit of ground bait, and uh, hopefully we'll catch some fish. Most of the pegs on, on all the lakes here have pretty similar contours. So we've got the ledge close in, which sort of like bottoms out at between five and six metres. Now that's where I'll have probably the main line that we fish here, which is what I call the everything line, where I'm hoping to catch roach, small skimmers, and hopefully some bonus, bonus big skimmers later on. Um, now I always start that line with three potfuls full of loose ground bait with like a handful of like dead maggots, maybe some casters, not too much feed, because we don't, don't really want to put too much in at the beginning because I can always put more in as we're fishing and I can feel my way in. So if I'm catching a lot of roach, I'd like to feed, we actually fish joker, bloodworm and jokers in, in the league that we're fishing, but today I've, I've, it's, I've not brought any with us, so it's just generally maggots and pinkies. But when, when there's roach in the peg, I like to, we like to feed a little bit more joker to sort of keep them on the bottom competing because they really want to eat a lot more than like the skimmers do. But if, if it turns out that there's more skimmers in my peg, I will sort of like feed smaller balls with less baiting because if I put too much bait in when the skimmer's there, they either disappear or they just come off the bottom and they, it's just horrible. So that's the short line. Then generally it'll be 13 metres because it's normally windy here. It's really open and it's well, it's just always windy anyway over winter nowadays, isn't it? So I'll have two long lines at 13 metres, which one will be straight in front of me, which will be my main ground bait and bloodworm and maggot line. And then I'll have a separate line, depending on which way the wind's blowing. I'll sort of like have it at either sort of like 10, 11 o'clock or one or two o'clock. Like I said, depending on tow and, and, and wind and everything else. So the main line in front of me, that'll be, I'll normally feed that with three small golf balls of ground bait, some jokers, same again, not much bait in it to begin with because I can top up however throughout the day, however I feel like I need to. Um, so yeah, three balls on that line to start with and then I'll have a, on, on the off, out of the way line I'll put sort of like 50 micro pellets and a really slack handful of dry ground bait which that's my starting line because the main line in front of me I, that I'm looking at leaving that for at least an hour to let some some better fish get the reds down and get some confidence basically um, and like I said on that on the other line the minimal amount of bait is so that I can hopefully catch fish quicker so I'll, I'll fish that with a, a nice little rig probably an expander pellet or a single maggot on the hook and that's to catch anything that swims probably more more skimmers because you know i'm fishing pellets there but it, that's just my starting line so that's basically the three lines which i will fish throughout the day and that's how i'll start them off and like topping up wise is different on every day sometimes i'll top up like i said really regularly if i'm catching roach or sometimes i'll top up less regular but with bigger balls it's it's almost a feel your way in, but the the three lines that I'm fishing is will I'll fish them on every single peg that I sit down on. I'll start on those two long lines, and then sort of after two hours, I'll look at coming onto the short line, and hopefully, as long as there's a bit of ripple, we'll generally catch on there till the end. So rig-wise, it couldn't be really any easier. All I set up is generally three rigs. I've got two rigs for my main ground bait lines and a pellet and a pellet rig. Now the main the main rig for my um, 
my ground bait lines is a 0 0.6 which has just got a, a simple bulk of eights and then two droppers spaced roughly eight inch apart below number eight droppers again so if if I, when i'm laying a bit of line on if i get a lift bite or anything or you know i can i can read it on the bristle when it picks up the number eight so i'm not using tiny shots which probably wouldn't register when a fish lifts the bait up because generally like i said i'm fishing over depth to try and keep it nice and still for skimmers as they don't like they don't like the bait wafting about um Sometimes, sometimes if I'm catching roach, I won't, I won't lay it on as much, but I'll still use the number eight droppers because you can just, just more positive on the bristle to be fair. Um, and that's, I use a solid six on that. Main lines, 013, down to an 08 hook length. Uh, nothing, nothing really, very heavy because we're not fishing for big fish. Then on the, for the same line, I've got exactly the same line, same hooks. But a lighter float, slim float, with a strung out shotting pattern. That's for days like today, where it's nice and calm, and the fish just want to see the bait falling through the water rather than clunk setting on the bottom. So that's basically the two rig for those two lines. And then I've got a pellet, pellet rig, which I've got slightly heavy elastic on this. This is a, a three to five hollow, um, similar size float, 0.6. But this has just got one bulk at the top of the well, a spread bulk at the top of a six inch hook length. Because I'm expecting everything to be on nice, nice and tight on the bottom. So I'm not looking for fish on the drop. I'm not, you know, it, it's it's just a positive way of fishing. And lines on this as well is a little bit heavier. I've gone to I've gone to an 010 hook length, but 013 main line. That's simply because I've got good chance of hooking some carp on this because I'm fishing pellets. Quite an important thing is how you put your rig in actually into the water because we're putting sort of like minimal baiting on each line you need to make sure that everything is dead accurate so i mean one of the biggest things for me as well is like using the bump bar but i mean we'll come on to that later when i'm putting my rig in over, over my bait i like to lay it in and lower it down and hold the float let's just say eight to ten inches above the water so basically when you're holding that float out of the water for that 8 inch, like I said, everything's straightening up and you know that it's going to be bang over the bait that you've loose fed, that you've put in, in the pole pot. Um, and that's with the bulk, that's with the bulk and droppers rig, but like I said, on a day like this where it's really calm, sometimes the fish want to watch it fall through the water. So when I'm fishing with my lighter strung out rig, I like to lay the rig in past generally with that rig i'll lay it in past the bait as well because sometimes the fish are backing off and because i'm i'm fishing a little bit kinkier shall we say a little bit lighter i feel like the fish might be at the back of the bait as well so when i lay the rig and i like to lay it past past the pole tip and just let it naturally fall but holding it tight at the same time so the maggots are coming down really slow and especially that that, that last six inches where there's no shot the maggot sinks really, really slowly, and nine times out of ten, it takes it as soon as it hits the bottom. So another quite crucial tip for me um, especially over this winter with it being really really windy is using a pole support now I've used a pole support for years and I, I really believe that it, it's 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 won me quite a lot of money over the years but this winter especially because we've had loads of storm Daniels and whatever else it, it, it's 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 helped me catch more fish without without a doubt um, and I mean the, the beauty about this one is the, the diff, we've got numerous different ripples in it we've got a flat side on it as well and it's so it's not just about lining up with your markers or whatever. You can you can pick the third one in, fourth one in, and you know that you're going to put it in there every single time. It's not just it's not just for windy days as well. I I do especially skimmer fishing. I do like to use it on flat calm days so that I know that again my my hook bait my float is bang over my bait, and I know that 
I'm not. If I can, if I, if, if there's no hands on it, I know that pole's not getting moved. Um, it's, it's surprising that when there's a tiny bit of toe on the water or a little bit of surface skim, how it, your float can move without you almost knowing. But if if that's if that's in that position all the time, you know that float can't go anywhere. And it's I think it's really really important, especially for catching skimmers, um, to keep your bait immaculately still. Quite a slow start, which was um, I was pretty much expecting. I think with the with the frost we had and the bright conditions, it's actually turned out to be quite a good session. Really, um, this is one of the bigger fish, probably pound pound and a quarter. Um, I've maybe had five or six of these and numerous other smaller skimmers. The last sort of hour or so, I've come onto the short line, um, which I thought that the fish generally come in as the day goes on. I've had maybe two or three of those big ones and some smaller skimmers. Um, there's been some indications, but I think because it's flat calm, I've not been able to catch as many as I wanted there. But it's still been a really steady day. Uh, I fished pellets for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, caught an odd fish. And then that gives my main ground bait line time to settle for the fish to sort of like gather on there and be confident in eating and I've gone on that and caught steady away on that as well just not not bagging but you don't need to bag when when the fish are the sort of size between four ounce and a pound um, so yeah it's, it's it's turned into quite a good day and, and tough conditions like I said with the frost this morning flat calm bright sunshine um, it's been really good plenty of bites <laughs>